Alex Putney over at humanresonance.org has, for a number of years now, been unraveling some rather startling secrets. Secrets surrounding Nikola Tesla's free energy technologies and the systematic suppression thereof, and seemingly deciphering a number of astounding ancient discoveries, all of which strongly indicating one's highly advanced knowledge of sound waves, resonance, and indeed levitation of extremely large weights. Coined as the, quote, piezoelectric basins by Alex himself, it seems he, along with a number of other researchers' exhaustive efforts, have discovered some compelling and intriguing characteristics of many ancient ruins which litter most of Egypt, dotted along the banks of the Nile. We have, in the past, touched upon the possibility of sound resonance having been a factor in Edward Leedskalen's mysterious and secretive construction of Coral Castle, which can be found within Florida. Many believe that Edward somehow unraveled the secrets to the pyramids, and in doing so, was able to recreate his own rudimentary resonance machine, enabling him to lift enormous weights with relative ease. As our knowledge of our environment and the mysteries of our ancestors deepens, especially regarding their once mystifying and astounding knowledge of construction, left to ruin in many areas of the world, accepted as having never had access to heavy machinery, we must look elsewhere for our answer as to how these weights were moved. An outspoken local wisdom keeper of the Giza Plateau, Egyptologist and tour guide Abdel Hakim Ayan, has brought very controversial but extremely compelling knowledge to bear regarding profound implications of these astounding ancient constructions. Hakim's provocative commentary on the misconceptions of modern academics was broadcast in The Pyramid Code, a documentary produced by Dr. Carmen Bolter, professor at the University of Calgary, a documentary well worth investigation. It reveals several insights, including the advanced nature of the psychoacoustic and biorhythmic effects of these ancient Sanskrit monuments that he claims have all been falsely attributed to the Egyptian civilization. Part of his testimony is as follows. It must be noted that due to Abdel's intimate knowledge of the Giza Plateau, he should undoubtedly be perceived as a reliable source of avenues for alternative esoteric research. He claims that in 1936, while the Sphinx was still covered up to the neck in sand, there were tunnels he personally explored, claiming that past the Abu Ghraib, a crystal altar was found, containing a round disc in the middle of four radial lines, a symbol of Hotep, Hotep meaning peace and food. This round disc was a lid on a shaft, about 180 feet deep to the level of the ocean where he claims there is still running water, and there is still, quote, much more to be found. There are many ancient mysteries still to be unraveled within ancient Egypt, and although they are rarely academically shared, the basalt floor found upon the Giza Plateau, being one such feature, located at the base of the Great Pyramids, possess some of the most compelling fragments of ancient advanced machinery anywhere on Earth, let alone Egypt. Additionally, there does indeed exist other areas upon the Giza Plateau that also exhibit these unquestionably compelling fingerprints left by an as yet not understood ancient advanced technology. One such place, known as Abu Ghraib, is a place that many alternative researchers assert could have once been some sort of ancient stargate. Originally built as a sun temple, constructed to represent the ritually vivifying power of the sun god Ra, it was one of six temples built upon the site. However, only two have been identified, Yuzerkov and that of Nayusera. At the base of the site, at the western end, an enormous obelisk has also been unearthed, which, according to experts, symbolized the resting place of the sun god Ra. The obelisk's base is a pedestal, with sloping sides and a square top. It is approximately 20 meters high and is constructed of red granite and limestone. Estimates of the combined height of the obelisk and base vary, although a number of independent researchers believe when the structure was built, 
the total height of the obelisk was most likely somewhere between 50 and 70 meters in height, an enormous height and indeed weight for any of the currently attested ancient Egyptian builders to have worked with. But what we find the most intriguing regarding this obelisk, and indeed ancient site, linking back to the advanced anomalies located upon the basalt floor, is the enigmatic drill holes found driven straight through the heart of this monolith, and many of the other large granite stones which still litter the site, the holes undoubtedly completed using some form of high-rotation power tool. Clear, compelling evidence that whoever created this ancient work had access to astonishingly advanced technologies. Additionally, the site is also home to a number of enormous red granite blocks, each weighing in at several tons. Curiously, these massive blocks also exhibit the same uncanny precision cuts and extremely well-polished surfaces which are also found throughout ancient Egypt and the quarries thereof. All once mounted into position with such incredible precision, many investigators have concluded after visiting the site, just like the conclusions one is left with after exploring ancient Baalbek, that whoever laid these massive stones into position had an extraordinary technological prowess. Why does modern academia continue to deny such truths in favor of such mundane and incomplete testimonies as to the true origins and builders of ancient Egypt? How can we continue to be expected to believe, in the face of such compelling, overwhelming evidences, that these sites were merely the work of our more modern copper-wielding ancestors? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. In the first wing of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, close to the room of the mummies, one cannot help but be surprised by what you will discover. In a small, inconspicuous display cabinet, an object like no other can be found. Made from a brittle stone known as schist, it is similar in shape to a wheel or discus. This mysterious and to this day unexplained item has become known among particular circles as the tri-lobed disc. It has perplexed all those who have examined it, especially the select Egyptologists that have had the opportunity to study it at great length. Its discoverer is known as one of the most important Egyptologists of the 20th century, author of a classic volume on Egyptology, Archaic Egypt, that continues to be an important bibliographic reference of study even to this day. While carrying out excavations in 1936, Within the archaeological zone of Saqqara, Emery discovered the tomb of Prince Sabu. Among several utensils of varying function, the trilobe disc would be found. Emery's attention was immediately drawn to the object, initially defining it in his reports on the first dynasty tombs as, quote, a container in the form of schist bowl. Years later, he again commented on the subject with a word that perfectly summarized the reality of the situation indicating to the discomfort the object was causing, describing it as a kachibachi, a small hole that threatens to become bigger and bigger. It seems Emery, like many others within the same field, retained their success and notoriety by deliberately and publicly denying such artifacts any traction within the public domain. Denying us all a true understanding of Egyptian history, or at least a questioning of the currently upheld teachings. He finished his quotation by stating that a satisfactory explanation has not yet been obtained on the particular design of this object or indeed its construction. The accepted and predictably rigid view regarding the introduction of the wheel into ancient Egypt coincided with the invasion of the Hyksos at the end of the Medium Empire in 1640 BC, this date being over a thousand years after the disc's construction. Egyptologist Cyril Alred reached the conclusion that the object was, without a doubt, a copy of a previously much older metallic object. A detail next to the orifice in the center also made him suspect that this object was only a small part of a more complex mechanism and that it was saved thanks to a stone reproduction for unknown reasons made by an artist with unknown tools. 
and the fact that it demonstrates such a complex design at such a primitive time in ancient Egyptian history suggests its origins may have been far more unusual than modern tenants would have you believe. It is highly possible that this artifact is a fragment of one's highly advanced technologies, which have subsequently been lost over the millennia. Regardless of hypothesis, its true function, history, or indeed construction, its reason for existence remains a mystery to this day. There are many mysteries to be found within ancient Egypt. Unexplained, seemingly impossible mysteries, which litter the caverns, tunnels, flooded underground layers, and indeed, the once inaccessible passageways, only recently explored using advanced modern technology. However, some of the most perplexing mysteries lay in plain sight. Not only the Great Pyramids themselves, an obvious enigma for academia to explain the construction of, but many anomalous features which can be found within objects often leaving academics baffled as to an explanation. The Cheops sarcophagus being one such anomaly. Although these pyramids are entered and explored by millions of people every year, and indeed, this mysterious sarcophagus shown to many of these inquisitive explorers, what many the funded academic tour guide often leaves absent from their explanation of this supposed tomb is how exactly it arrived at its current location. As we have explored and exposed previously, the casing stones that can be found on many of the pyramids are to us not only indicative of another phase of construction work, once having been undertaken upon these structures, but due to the erosion present and the different styles featured, are in fact indicative of more than one attempt to conserve these marvelous structures for future generations. Thus, one must conclude by more than one now extinct advanced civilization. As such, the age of the sarcophagus of Cheops could be immense. So it is not surprising that it has encountered not only grave robbers, but has been vandalized also at points within the distant past. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing and frustrating, is that the sarcophagus lid is missing, a lid that could have explained the past contents of this mysterious box. Or like the tomb of Pakal, exposed extremely controversial illustrations of possible past technologies. Unfortunately, however, or rather most conveniently for academics, this lid has never been discovered. Yet what is most perplexing regarding this diorite box, notably one of the hardest workable stones on Earth, is that no one seems to know how the original builders managed to transport the box to its current location deep within the bowels of Cheops. The diameter of this supposed tomb, being too large to have traveled down any of the known tunnels, which have so far been discovered within the ancient pyramid. This leaves us with two likely possibilities. One, that the diorite box was placed there and the pyramid built around it, which is a mysterious and confusing hypothesis, mostly due to the lack of markings of significance found upon the sarcophagus, or indeed the lack of any dedicative markings found anywhere else surrounding it. It is as though the box was placed there without much effort to indicate any importance to its existence. Yet, to cut such a box, which has since been discovered to have been cast from one single block of diorite, would have taken tremendous effort a feat that modern man would only accomplish with the use of diamond-edged power tools. Not to mention the effort that would have been involved in moving this multi-ton stone into its found location. The second hypothesis regarding how this sarcophagus found its way into its current location is that the box itself was transported to its found location through tunnels and passageways we are yet to discover possibly hinting at the fact that within this great pyramid, there are indeed many more hidden layers and cavities we are yet to explore or discover. Maybe the placement of this seemingly inanimate box was placed there to suggest exactly this. Furthermore, what was on the lid of this supposed sarcophagus? 
Why is it known as the sarcophagus of Khufu, when Khufu was not discovered within it? In fact, nothing was discovered within it. And why is the lid mysteriously absent? Where did the lid to the sarcophagus go? Why, if destroyed by grave robbers, was it not left where it lay? Did this lid contain controversial information, possibly pertaining to the original contents or indeed purpose of the Great Pyramids? We find the diorite sarcophagus of Khufu, and indeed its unexplainable journey into the center of the pyramid, highly compelling.